Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking into how we can actually communicate with MongoDB using Spring Boot application. We'll be using Spring Boot 3 and we'll be exploring the problem details DTO in order to communicate problems that may happen in your application. So with this, let's get started. So we start with going to start.spring.io. So here we are going to add the web dependency and then we are going to add the Spring Data MongoDB dependency so there are two here that is spring data reactive we are going to use the spring data mongodb one now along with this we are going to use spring 3 version and let's give this a group name and let's call it spring mongodb communication we'll be using java version 17 because that's the baseline for spring boot 3 and we'll be using maven so with this let's generate the project so now I have actually created this particular project and I have filled it with code. So let's actually look at this. So I have this main here. In this, I have various packages, exception, model, repository, web. Let's actually start with the lowermost thing that is the model. So we have the product here. So we have this product model wherein I have kept this particular ID and I have specified a product name and a price here. Along with this, I'm keeping a map of attributes now whenever you have a particular product that say you want to sell on an e-commerce platform you don't have fixed number of attributes right you can have n number of attributes so that's what we are kind of modeling over here using this particular map so mongodb will allow us to keep this variable size json into mongodb as documents so hence i've specified this annotation document on top of this so this is the model that we are going to save into the database and then retrieve it. Now let's look at the repository. In the repository, we have the product repository, which extends Mongo repository. And here I'm specifying the model and the ID type. Simple repository, nothing much of a big change here. Next, what we are going to do is we are going to define our web controller. So using the web controller, we will now actually save the product and then retrieve the product. So I have this particular post mapping here, which takes the product. I know I'm using the model directly here. You should usually have a DTO, which actually takes the input from the front end or takes the input from the caller and then convert it into your model and save it into the database. But for simplicity, I'm just directly using the model here. So now I save this particular product here and then after I return the response back again. Now, in case of the get mapping, I find that particular product by ID and then afterwards, if that product is not available, I'm throwing this exception. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to use a Spring Boot 3 feature that is problem details. So in this way, it's a standard DTO through which you can actually communicate what problems have occurred when something goes wrong. So I'm throwing this particular product not found exception and then I have this rest controller advice. So if you see here in this rest controller advice, I have this exception handler here, which actually takes care of products not being found. And then I'm creating this particular problem detail. So in this, I'm setting the status as 404 and then I'm setting some information. So this particular type here, it is actually to give some information when this particular error occurs. Right now, I'm just putting my GitHub link to this particular repo and I'm putting this particular message inside the problem detail. So let's see what happens when we actually get this particular problem. So we have the code ready, right? But we need to communicate with MongoDB. So for this, I have this Docker Compose file here. So in this Docker Compose file, I have MongoDB here, wherein I'm actually mapping this port to my host. And then after that, I also have this Mongo Express image being called. So what this does is it's like a UI so that you can interact with MongoDB through the web interface. So here I'm using Mongo Express to communicate with MongoDB and then giving it the username and password to this MongoDB instance and exposing the port through which I'll access this particular web portal. With this, let's actually start this particular Docker Compose file. So MongoDB has started right now and this is the location for our web portal. So I'm going to open this here and this is the Mongo Express UI that is present. So here we actually see the various databases that are there. Currently, since we have not started our application, we don't see the database, but we can always create it from here. So let's create this product DB 
database and we have this product db database available for this right now there is nothing inside this particular database so let's go back now now let's actually go ahead and start our application so our application has started now why exactly this application is able to actually communicate with mongodb is because in the resources directory i have this properties file so in this properties.yaml i've specified the host i've specified the port the db the username and the password and also i'm specifying the authentication db so this is important why because the authentication details are present inside this admin database and that's how it's able to then communicate and then authenticate with the mongodb instance this logging level i've just put it for debugging sake so if anybody wants to do any kind of debugging to figure out what has gone wrong they can put on this particular logging level and see this output so since our application is up and running let's actually make some calls so so i have this postman here so in this i'm making a post call to products and i'm specifying a particular payload here so i'm specifying here this particular payload and let's actually create this particular product so now this product is currently created and i got this particular new id that is created for this particular product if we want we can go back to this viewer and refresh this so you can see we have one object being present here so let's actually look at this so inside this you see that we have this one object being created and let's look inside this so this is the json that we stored it contains all the attributes here and this is the id for this particular json that we stored inside so now let's actually make a get call so i'll go to the get call api and here i'm going to specify the id and retrieve that particular product so with this we saw how we can actually store a product inside mongodb and then again retrieve it using the id now say for example you didn't have this particular product so suppose if i give this product one i want to fetch this particular product which is of id one so right now there is no product in the database so i'm going to make this particular call and see what happens so if you see here it gave me this nice little message here telling me what was wrong so this is the same problem details dto that we were actually populating inside our controller advice so here is a type so this should be filled with the web link containing more information about what this particular error is right now i'm just putting the github repo link in this case but usually you should put the link towards that particular web page then i have this information that is instance slash one that is a call that we actually made this was actually auto populated by spring and given to us if i go back to the code if you see here i didn't fill in the instance value this was filled by spring and was written to us now this was doing the entire error handling and giving a nice proper message to the caller who have probably queried for a particular product that does not exist this is all the application that is running it's communicating with mongodb and everything done but finally we have to write tests right so let's look at one of the integration tests that's written so we have this particular integration test here in this i have two tests one wherein we successfully store a particular product into mongodb and retrieve it successfully and the second one is wherein we query for a particular product which actually does not exist so with this how i am running this particular test is using test containers so i am using test containers to actually run mongodb and this will actually provide me the particular ports and then i'll be setting the username and password as part of properties here and i'm going to get the mapped host and the port here and i'm going to set it as properties here finally i will run this particular test so let's actually run both the tests together so as you can see here both the tests have successfully passed here so this is the entire project setup for communicating with mongodb using spring data mongodb now i have uploaded this entire code onto my github repo and the link to the github repo is present in my blog so i'm linking that particular blog into the description below so for you to refer it later so we saw how we can actually communicate with mongodb using spring boot and then visualize the database using mongodb express we also saw how we can actually report the problems that happened because the product was not found using problem details so this is the feature that has been available from spring boot 3 now i keep on exploring such kind of things so make sure you subscribe to this particular channel and give it a thumbs up for more such videos to come and see you in my next one